Yeah, the, the, the regional picture is an interesting one to take in. I mean, uh, certainly throughout the 1990s, there were regular meetings of um, foreign, uh, foreign ministry officials of Turkey, Iran, Syria and Iraq over what to do about the Kurdistan region. It was seen as a threat. Times have changed now. I mean, the Kurdistan region is no longer de facto, in a sense, illegal. It's now an approbated region of Iraq that has a, a, a legal status. Um, and it's also a, a big market. It's active. The economy is... Okay, it's... Um, it's there's certainly some weak parts to it, but um, it's developing. Um, and particularly in Turkey, we've seen great changes, I think, in attitude towards the Kurdistan region. Of course, there are some parts of the Turkish political structures that uh, totally oppose the idea of the Kurdistan region, but there are others that actually interact with it, even invest in it. Uh, similarly so with um, Arab states, we're seeing heightened investment coming from the Gulf into Kurdistan, and there's always been a very strong thing between the Kurdistan region and Iran. Uh, that, that still exists today. With Syria, it's, it's a, an interesting question. Syria has its own Kurdish problem um, uh, that, that has become more noticeable recently. But how will its lengthened border with a Kurdistan region affect it? They, they would probably end up doing what the other countries do, uh, use it to their own advaikan, and just hope it doesn't inflame Kurdish opinions in, within their own boundaries further. Um, so I, I, I think we've seen a big change from 2003 onwards when these states had to recognize the Kurdistan region formally. Uh, sometimes it's difficult for them to do it. We still see problems in Turkey with the receptions that President Masoud Barzani and President Jalal Talabani receive at times. Um, but ultimately I think this is beginning to change. It's, I think they realize now that it's no longer possible to turn back the clock and deconstruct this region and hope it will go away. We obviously cling to the constitution of Iraq, which is a constitution that we hope all of Iraq's neighbors respect and adhere to. And in that constitution, it is the region is referred to as the Kurdistan region. Um, actually, it was called the Kurdistan region even under Saddam's days. Um, so it, it surprises us when, when people still have this this unnecessary sensitivity to the K-word, um, and to think that if, if they don't mention it, um, then in fact it doesn't exist, quite the contrary. Um, but we, we do work um, with the US government to try to address and ease some tensions with some of our neighboring countries. We are constantly urging the US to play an active and positive role in bringing us closer together with Turkey, for example, who is a NATO ally of the United States, a strategic partner of the United States. Um, and a partner that we consider as, as strategic for the future as we develop um, the Iraqi Kurdistan region within Iraq. The term Kurdistan is not as taboo as it once uh, used to be. And uh, the reason why it was once upon a time, and maybe still to a certain extent, a tabo tabooish uh, term, has a lot to do with uh, the Turkish state, let's say, state's political culture and uh, the elite associated with the Turkish state, fearing that this term uh, suggests the, uh, the uh, existence, the emergence of a separate state that would also incorporate the parts of Turkey that is populated by Kurds. So a fear of secessionism and a fear of irredentism. Well, of course, uh, it was obvious during the elections when people in an informal uh, referendum, over 97% of the population voted for an independent Kurdish state. But the leadership is realistic, the leadership knows uh, what's in the interest of the people considering the regional and the international circumstances. That would not be something achievable, therefore it's better not to put at risk what we have achieved so far. It's better for us to achieve our objectives within Iraq, within a federal and democratic system.
as a nation we deserve and we have all the right to have our own independent state one day. But we believe that can be achieved through peaceful ways and not through violence. Therefore, today the Kurdish leadership in Iraq has opted for a federal, democratic, pluralistic Iraq and Iraq that uh, guarantees the rights of our people and would not uh, have the tragedies of the past be repeated again. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything particularly worrying about most Kurds saying they want to be independent. You'd probably get a pretty similar answer from any region in the United Kingdom, or uh, it, it's a an ethno-nationalist dream of many people to, to have an independent status for their people. Um, there are some observers that think the Kurds made a mistake, that the Kurdish leaders should have taken advantage of the um, confusion of the immediate post-2003 period and declared independence. The Kurdish leadership seems to think that it made the right choices by wanting to uh, be seen as the, the good partners in Iraq and assisting in the reconstruction of the post saddam state. I think it was wise to err on the side of caution. If they declared independence back in 2003, they would probably, I think, have seen a Turkish invasion very, very quickly and would probably have lost the support of the Americans as well. Um, the idea that you can be a Kurdistan region within a wider state, have access to greater resources, um, protection in a pretty hostile environment, is an attractive one. The question is, can they really build that? Can they really develop an Iraq like that? And Iraq has never been like that in the past. Can that develop in the future that has a, a vibrant, active, very autonomous Kurdistan region within it, and they have all the guarantees that they need uh, to exist there? That's going to be the question that has to be answered over the next few years, even months, I would say, with the upcoming um, problems on, on the disputed territories. Turkey is an important country and an important neighbor and we want to have good and normal relations with Turkey a relationship which would be beneficial for both sides. Uh, issues like Kirkuk and other disputed areas are internal Iraqi matters. According to the Constitution, there is a roadmap how to solve them, and these are issues that can be settled uh, by the Iraqi people themselves, and these are domestic issues and have to be addressed at that level. Turkey had a series of red lines, and if those red lines were to be violated, severe consequences would flow, although what these severe consequences would be were never really openly pronounced, except hinted that this might be a military intervention, etc. And these red lines included the, uh, 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 the uh, at first, one of the red lines was the establishment of a federated Kurdish state there. However, that line kind of became blurred and uh, uh, ambiguous and lost its red line qualities and became grayer and grayer. And uh, the fact that these official uh, meetings actually took place, I think, is a function of this red line uh, weakening. The other red line is uh, the establishment of a Kurdish state. I suspect that red line is still there, but because of the reasons I cited out earlier on, all this dialogue and in, uh, re relationships that is taking place, I think on both sides there is a recognition that a, a separate, fully-fledged Kurdish independent state uh, may not only be realistic at this point in time, but may not also be to the advantage of neither side in, uh, in, let's say, the broader context of bringing stability to I Iraq. I mean, into this I include Iran, Syria, Turkey, and other parties that are there, including the United States. 
course, uh, as a government in, of this region, as part of the Iraqi uh, ruling system, as partners in Iraq, we are committed to uh, non -inter the principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of the neighboring countries, and we are for good neighborly relationship, a relationship which is based on trust, confidence, and respect, a relationship which is uh, for the mutual interest and benefit of both sides. Of course, we sympathize with our brothers and sisters in other parts and in the countries. We believe that there is room for this question to be addressed and solved within the countries that they live in, for these uh, communities to get together with the governments uh, they live in in order to have a peaceful solution for that question, because we believe that uh, it's the time of political dialogue, it's the time of negotiation, and uh, we believe that that would be in the interest of the entire region to have peace, stability, and security. We believe that uh, this region is a legitimate entity and it's a constitutional entity. It's part of Iraq and we're committed to uh, this process and to Iraq. And therefore, uh, we, are, we abide by the foreign policy of Iraq as a country to respect the international boundaries of our neighbors, not to interfere in their internal affairs, and likewise we expect them to do the same. Uh, I, I think it puzzles a lot of people here in Turkey uh, as to why the Peshmerge cannot stop the PKK and take more effective measures. And uh, of course in Turkey there are also circles that then abuse this and begin to argue that this is done on purpose, that there is a political agenda uh, in, uh, in the way in which the Kurdish administration in northern Iraq is unwilling or reluctant to do, to take any serious uh, measures. But I feel that the picture is more complicated than that. Uh, uh, all right, the PKK, since the uh, major military intervention in February, appears to have taken a major dent. So it, right now it's much more vulnerable. About a week or ten days ago I was reading in the media that uh, some of its leadership had actually become scattered. But until then, until then, the PKK remained a major, if you wish, a military force in the region, with which a whole Turkish military establishment was uh, struggling with. All right, it may have been struggling with, with its hands tied behind its back in the sense it could not militarily intervene in northern Iraq and uh, the, the PKK was able to mount the kind of operations that was directly influencing Turkish domestic politics and making life for those who, who politically would like to address the Kurdish question here in Turkey as well as those who were wanting to, um, who believed that it was to Turkey's interest to improve relations with the Kurdish administration in northern Iraq. Very difficult, extremely uh, uh, dif difficult. So I think there was a convergence of interest in Turkey over a very limited scale intervention. Uh, I'm sure the United States played a very important role in uh, kind of scaling down the nature of this uh, relationship and I'm also sure that the US government was very much interested in uh, repairing some of the damage in US uh, Turkish relations. Ima Pimanwaya Kalpakaka Barhami in Taji Shteka Pierin Keshe Kurd La Kurdustani Turkey. Amayak Agar Pakaka Tundutija Barhami out Tundutija ka ideology kemalism la turkiya barambar ba kurdu sarkut kirdini nasnami kurdin wa dueti balam pia manu al hamakata drejadani pakaka ba khabati takjar chakdari ba karinani tunutiji 
خزمت نبا کشی کردستانی ترکیه که نبا هرمی کردستانی عراقی شد. باید اما باشون منوایه. پکا کواز لخباتی چک داری بینه و قرصای خوب خاطر سر خباتی مدنی و بشری آشتی خوازانه و با خباتی دموکراسی لناو کردستانی ترکیه هولی بد سینانی مافن توکانی خواهم. اما پی منوایه او او وز شکی پکا کا وظیفه کی دیاری کرایی نما و بدی بینه. بلکو بوتا بربسته کش لبردم پیشونی کشی کرده بلام نه همان که تا چاوری اوش که این لراسیه دولتی ترکیه دست پیش خریه که همون رگا کن دانه خواه بای خلکی که چار آسوکان لآسوکان و چار سری که اشتی بینیم با کشی کرد او که تا خود با خودی او پاسا با چکوت نتیجی پکا که نامه نتاو پکا کش اگاره بر رخلاوی که سیاسی سیویل لناو خواه فکت ات دی ایو توک ای ویری کرتیکل position or vis-a-vis -vis the PKK and took the line that the Turkish state had the right to take measures against the PKK may also have had an impact on the Kurdish uh, administration. And it's purely my hunch and my speculation, not that I have talked about this to anybody, I have a feeling that in northern Iraq there is there are people who are the counterpart of those in Turkey that advocate reform, that advocate uh, growth of economic relations uh, and uh, dialogue that they feel would benefit the northern Iraq, the Kurds in northern Iraq, if not also Iraq at large, just as there are people in Turkey who take a very pragmatic view, who are not ideologically driven, who do not have a hard, inflexible, nationalist agenda, who believe that uh, better relations, uh, more dialogue, more economic interactions with northern Iraq is to the benefit of Turkey, at large, but also southeastern Turkey, the areas populated by Kurds, which is economically a uh, depressed area, and that it would also benefit Turkey's relations with Iraq at large, but if you wish with the international community as well. And these two groups of, uh, let's say, personalities, officials, politicians, maybe columnists, and maybe uh, uh, academics have reinforced e each other by guiding this relationship in a, in a direction that helps to build mutual trust. Now when I look at this whole picture, I have a feeling that amongst those in northern Iraq who prefer to be pragmatic rather than ideological uh, and uh, hardcore nationalists, I think, and this is pure speculation, I think, though publicly they were opposing a Turkish intervention against the PKK, behind the, that facade they were hoping that a well-managed, uh, reasonable intervention would take place to weaken the PKK. Because at the end of the day, the PKK is a political, agenda, a political entity that has a political agenda that I feel uh, conflicts with the agenda of major players in northern Iraq, like the KDP and the uh, PUK. And I, I think most of these politicians, I may be wrong, at least that's how I see it, most of these po politicians want to consolidate the Kurdish federated state and get on with addressing economic uh, problems in, uh, in expanding the economy of northern Iraq, in bringing more jobs to the people uh, of the region, help a little bit with uh, prosperity, get as much political stability as possible, and then also help with, uh, with uh, expanding this into the rest of Iraq, with, which is a major challenge. But I would agree with those who would have been saying that if they took on 
the PKK, they risk destabilizing uh, northern Iraq. And uh, I think in a geography where nationalistic discourse, nationalistic populist discourse is very easy to employ and uh, uh, can very easily sway public, uh, public opinion, uh, they may have been right even if without publicly admitting it they were hoping that the Turkish side would not be put off by their, let's say, uh, a hardline position on non-intervention and weaken the PKK without doing damage to civilians because if the Turkish side would do that, then it would weaken the hand of the administration as well. And my hunch is that, by and large, this strategy has worked uh, so far, uh, and uh, we will see what will come of the PKK in the future. I'm a Burwaman, but I'm a Seri, Cheshe, Brayakan, Kurdakan, Kurdistan, Iran, and Turkey. I'm a Seri, and I'm a Zrandi party, or the program party, and I'm a Burwaman, and I'm a Seri, and I'm a Seri, and I'm a Seri. وکو کرد با آشتیانه دبی و دائما جنابی سرگ بارزانی دعای کردی لو حکومتانا او چشانا با آشتیانه سر سرکن و دعای کردی او او پری هاو کاری دکا تعاون دکا لبو اوی او قضیه با آشتی سر سر بی بلان بداخه و یعنی تا استا زمانی آشتی لو مسئله نبوا پی من و یعنی مسئله پککا نتیجه پککا سبب نیه پککا نتیجه يعني أوان دين تعامل لقل نتيجة كان تعامل لقل أسبابنا كان أسبابك حقوقي من التي كرد لكردستاني تركيا أجا أسبابك معالجة بكرين نتيجة كا بخوي حد بي بويا أما طبيعي بخو من هم لقل هم لقل أو لاملي تركيانينا كناوي قزي كرد بشيوش أشتانة ترى سلبك أو أجا قازان سبك لبو خوشي استفاده داکا لبرس لبرو یک ترکیه پیوستی به ول اتحادی اروپی داخل بی اروپیان یونیان یعنی او داخل بی ترکیه لوندر دوم خوی نرجه سیم حقوقی انسان به پی بنامکانی حقوقی انسان پرنسیپ کانی حقوقی انسان همو ملتان حقی تر نسی خواهند یا ملتی کل دچار کردستانی ترکیه حقی تر نسی خواهی کاکا نک حق کوکو اولی رهیا تاریج چی او حقیان همی اولی رهیا طوا يعني زور باشا اما لقل اوينا دوام لقل اوينينا كباكاكا بم هزي تاقداري بتونجي تيجي حقي كرد لكردستاني توشيا والبغير لقل اوينا باكاكا خباتي سياسي بكا خباتي دبلوماسي بكا وبارتي ديمقراطي كردستان ناطة طرف لشاري باكاكا ولشاري اوان بلام اقل هر وقتك شاري خوان بيخنا نو معلمة طبيعي اما رازينا Another political implication is that with the reforms, right, with room, public space opened for Kurdish identity in Turkey, it may not be as much as one would hope it would have been or to the level, to the satisfaction of uh, Kurdish groups. But nevertheless, it's become easier to operate politically with a Kurdish identity as well uh, in, in Turkey. So this is, I think, also facilitating Kurdish relations between northern Iraq and southeastern Turkey. Okay. And that's, uh, that, frankly, I feel, uh, is helping a lot to build a dialogue and expand that dialogue, even if some parts of this relationship may be radical, may be very nationalist, and may have adverse impact on public opinion on both sides. The fact that there is this dialogue, and the fact that there is a lot of interaction that is taking place between Turkey and northern Iraq, not to mention larger Iraq, is is making 
the uh, the management of the prospects of a, an independent Kurdish state, I think, a little bit easier, and it is also making it a little bit more palatable to uh, accept that at this point in time, this is not very realistic. Uh, so that that let's say that red line is still there but it's been put on a side burner and uh, it, it, it is not dramatically influencing Turkey's relations with Iraq at large and uh, with the Kurdish administration in northern Iraq. It does not hold the sensitivity that it did say two, three years ago when, for example, there was very heated and confrontationalist language being used by both both sides, and I even remember like Turkish flags being burned in uh, in uh, uh, northern Iraq with uh, big numbers of people demonstrating against uh, Turkey. So uh, these red lines have uh, very much weakened, and uh, for example, when this military intervention took place, or rather prior to that military intervention. There were many, many in Turkey from political parties as well as from civil society, politicians, and maybe even uh, state institutions uh, alluding that the whatever military intervention is mounted, it ought to also uh, take a shape that would uh, reduce the likelihood of a Kurdish state emerging and make the Kurdish administration there much more sensitive to Turkish sensitivities. Yet, I think the government, and I, uh, I think one has to recognize also that the military uh, gradually took a, a much more unequivocal and public position that this military intervention would only and only and only be directed towards the PKK, towards uh, weakening the ability of the PKK attacking Turkey, and that utmost attention, care would be uh, would be given to make sure that there would not be damage inflicted on civilians, uh, etc. The relationship between Turkey and the Kurdistan regional government is 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 mixed. It's it's we'd like to think it's improving. Um, on an economic basis, it is very strong. We have strong Turkish participation in the development of Kurdistan in key infrastructure projects such as oil and gas, um, airports, roads, bridges, service and tourism industries. Um, and we've seen how this economic relationship has been a bridge to building better political relationships. And um, I think that now that we've overcome some of some tensions and some own some of Turkey's own internal issues that this could potentially pave the way for an even better and lasting relationship between um, the two sides. We're we're neighbours. We're neither of us are going anywhere. So um, it is in our both of our interests to find a happy medium to coexist, to cooperate politically, economically, um, and to ensure that that we protect our own borders and boundaries. Uh. I think one major difference between relations uh, today with the region and relations, say, eight or ten years ago is, one, the way in which relations are much more diverse and intensified, uh, and two, the way in which economics and commerce is uh, playing an ever-growing role. Now, how much of it has to do with globalization, uh, by and large, and how much of it has to do with the political changes that have occurred in the course of the last four or five years is difficult to tell. But I'm tempted, tempted to argue that a, a, a good proportion of these changes can be attributed to political changes. Now, what are these political changes? One. Uh, obviously, it's the American intervention and the collapse of Saddam Hussein's regime 
and uh, a, a kind of reality emerging there with its own resources that is able to interact with Turkey economically and uh, uh, commercially. Uh, so it's a political development with economic and commercial implications, consequences. Uh, the second one is the reforms that have taken place in uh, Turkey, uh, especially in respect to the Kurdish problem in, uh, in Turkey, and the way in which this has made it easier to have uh, uh, open relations with authorities in uh, northern uh, Iraq. Uh, and uh, a good manifestation of this is the way in which two or three weeks ago, finally, a formal official contacts were made between, uh, between Turkish officials and officials from northern, uh, northern Iraq. I think these, this is an important development politically. A third important political development is that in Turkey, civil society uh, is coming to play a growing role in shaping Turkish foreign policy. So uh, business associations, chambers of commerce, companies, big companies with economic interests are getting a growing role in shaping Turkish foreign policy and I, I think that also has uh, played into greater relations between uh, northern Iraq and uh, Turkey at large. It is a tough neighborhood, um, and, and we've proven to be able to, to navigate the many challenges that, that, that we've faced over the last several decades. Um, we've built something um, that we, as Kurds, are proud of. We hope that our friends in the UK, the US, and around the world are proud of, which is a thriving civil society in the heart of the Middle East, of the Islamic Middle East, where Kurds and Arabs, Shiites, Sunnis, Turkmen, Christians, Yazidis, can live in a high degree of tolerance. Um, it is far from perfect, but we are improving all the time, and we think that this stability and tolerance that we've proven to be able to uh, manage and, and, and live in can be a positive impact politically, economically, um, domestically, and, and internationally. And we, we ready, we're ready to, to serve any goal or any role that, that, that strengthens the stability of our region and, and brings peace to, to our people. people still have this this unnecessary sensitivity to the k-word um, and to think that if, if they don't mention it um, then in fact it doesn't exist quite the contrary um, but we, we do work um, with the US government to try to address and ease some tensions with some of our neighboring countries we are constantly urging the US to play an active and positive role in bringing us closer together with Turkey for example who is a NATO ally of the United States, a strategic partner of the United States, um, and a partner that we consider as, as strategic for the future as we develop um, the Iraqi Kurdistan region within Iraq. 
the term Kurdistan is not as taboo as it once uh, used to be. And uh, the reason why it was once upon a time, and maybe still to a certain extent, a tabo tabooish uh, term has a lot to do with uh, the Turkish state, let's say, state's political culture and uh, the elite associated with the Turkish state fearing that this term uh, suggests the, uh, the uh, existence, the emergence of a separate state that would also incorporate the parts of Turkey that is populated by Kurds. So a fear of secessionism and a fear of irredentism. Well, of course, uh, it was obvious during the elections when people in an informal uh, referendum, over 97% of the population voted for an independent Kurdish state. But the leadership is realistic, the leadership knows uh, what's in the interest of the people, considering the regional and the international circumstances, that would not be something achievable, therefore it's better not to put at risk what we have achieved so far. It's better for us to achieve our objectives within Iraq, within a federal and democratic system. As a nation, we deserve and we have all the right to have our own independent state one day. But we believe that can be achieved through peaceful ways and not through violence. Therefore, today, the Kurdish leadership in Iraq has opted for a federal, democratic, pluralistic Iraq, an Iraq that uh, guarantees the rights of our people and would not uh, have the tragedies of the... We pronounce, except hinted that this might be a military intervention, etc. And these red lines included the... Uh, 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 the uh, at first, one of the red lines was the establishment of a federated Kurdish state there. However, that line kind of became blurred and uh, uh, ambiguous and lost its red line qualities and became grayer and grayer. And uh, the fact that these official uh, meetings actually took place, I think, is a function of this red line uh, weakening. The other red line is uh, the establishment of a Kurdish state. I suspect that red line is still there, but because of the reasons I cited out earlier on, all this dialogue and in, uh, re relationships that is taking place, I think on both sides there is a recognition that a, a separate, fully-fledged Kurdish independent state uh, may not only be realistic at this point in time, but may not also be to the advantage of neither side in, uh, in, let's say, the broader context of bringing stability to I Iraq. I mean, into this I include Iran, Syria, Turkey, and other parties that are there, including the United States. Of course, uh, as a government in, of this region, as part of the Iraqi uh, ruling system, as partners in Iraq, we are committed to uh, non -inter the principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of the neighboring countries, and we are for good neighborly relationship, a relationship which is based on trust, confidence and respect, a relationship which is uh, for the mutual interest and benefit of both sides. Of course, we sympathize with our brothers and sisters in other parts and in the countries. We believe that there is room for this question to be addressed and solved within the countries that they live in, for these uh, communities to get together with the governments uh, they live in in order to have a peaceful solution for that question because we believe that uh, it's the time of political dialogue, it's the time of negotiation and uh, we believe that that would be the interest of the entire region.
the, the, the regional picture is an interesting one to take in. I mean, uh, certainly throughout the 1990s, there were regular meetings of um, foreign, uh, foreign ministry officials of Turkey, Iran, Syria and Iraq over what to do about the Kurdistan region. They were seen as a threat. Times have changed now. I mean, the Kurdistan region is no longer de facto, in a sense, illegal. It's now an approbated region of Iraq that has a, a, a legal status. Um, and it is also a, a big market, it's active, the economy is, okay, it's, um, it's, there's certainly some weak parts to it, but um, it's developing. Um, and particularly in Turkey, we've seen great changes, I think, in attitude towards the Kurdistan region. Of course, there are some parts of the Turkish political structures that uh, totally oppose the idea of the Kurdistan region, but there are others that actually interact with it, even invest in it. Uh, similarly so with um, Arab states, we're seeing heightened investment coming from the Gulf into Kurdistan, and there's always been a very strong link between the Kurdistan region and Iran uh, that, that still exists today. With Syria, it's, it's a, an interesting question. Syria has its own Kurdish problem um, uh, that, that has become more noticeable recently, but how will its lengthened border with Kurdistan region affected, that they, they would probably end up doing what the other countries do, uh, use it to their own as they can, and just hope it doesn't inflame Kurdish opinions and within their own boundaries further. Um, so I, I, I think we've seen a big change from 2003 onwards when these states had to recognize the Kurdistan region formally. Uh, sometimes it's difficult for them to do it. We still see problems in Turkey with the receptions that President Masoud Barzani and President Jalal Talabani receive at times. Um, but ultimately I think this is beginning to change. It's, I think they realize now that it's no longer possible to turn back the clock and deconstruct this region and hope it will go away. We obviously cling to the constitution of Iraq, which is a constitution that we hope all of Iraq's neighbors respect and adhere to. And in that constitution, it is the region is referred to as the Kurdistan region. Um, actually, it was called the Kurdistan region even under Saddam's days. Um, so it, it surprises us when when region kind of peace, stability, and stability. We believe that uh, this region is a legitimate entity, and it's a constitutional entity. It's part of Iraq, and we're committed to uh, this process and to Iraq. And therefore, uh, we, are, we abide by the foreign policy of Iraq as a country to respect the international boundaries of our neighbors, not to interfere in their internal affairs, and likewise we expect them to do the same. Uh, I, I think it puzzles a lot of people here in Turkey uh, as to why the Peshmerga cannot stop the PKK and take more effective measures. And uh, of course in Turkey there are also circles that then abuse this and begin to argue that this is done on purpose, that there is a political agenda uh, in, uh, in the way in which the Kurdish administration in northern Iraq is unwilling or reluctant to do, to take any serious uh, measures. But I feel that the picture is more complicated than that. Uh, uh, all right, the PKK, since the uh, major military intervention in February, appears to have taken a major dent. So it, right now it's much more vulnerable. About a week or ten days ago I was reading in the media that uh, some of its leadership had actually become scattered. But until then, until then, the uh, PKK remained a major, if you wish, a military force in the region, with which a whole Turkish military establishment was uh, struggling with. All right, it may have been struggling with, with its hands tied behind its back in the sense it could not militarily intervene in northern Iraq and uh, the, the PKK was able to mount the kind of operations that w was directly influencing Turkish domestic politics and making life 
for those who who politically would like to address the Kurdish question here in Turkey as well as those who were wanting to um, who believed that it was to Turkey's interest to improve relations with the Kurdish administration in northern Iraq. The past be repeated again. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything particularly worrying about most Kurds saying they want to be independent. You probably get a pretty similar answer from any region in the United Kingdom, or uh, it, it's a, an ethno-nationalist dream of many people to, to have an independent status for their people. Um, there are some observers that think the Kurds made a mistake, that the Kurdish leaders should have taken advantage of the um, confusion of the immediate post-2003 period and declared independence. The Kurdish leadership seems to think that it made the right choices by wanting to uh, be seen as the, the good partners uh, in Iraq in assisting in the reconstruction of the post-Saddam state. I think it was wise to err on the side of caution if they declared independence back in 2003, they would probably, I think, have seen the Turkish invasion very, very quickly and would probably have lost the support of the Americans as well. Um, the idea that you can be a Kurdistan region within a wider state, have access to greater resources, um, protection in a pretty hostile environment, is an attractive one. The question is, can they really build that? Can they really develop an Iraq like that? And Iraq has never been like that in the past. Can that develop in the future that has a, a vibrant, active, very autonomous Kurdistan region within it and they have all the guarantees that they need uh, to exist there? That's going to be the question that has to be answered over the next few years, even months, I would say, with the upcoming um, problems on, on the disputed territories. Turkey is an important country and an important neighbor and we want to have good and normal relations with Turkey, a relationship which would be beneficial for both sides. Uh, issues like Kirkuk and other disputed areas are internal Iraqi matters. According to the constitution, there is a roadmap how to solve them and these are issues that can be settled uh, by the Iraqi people themselves and these are domestic issues and have to be addressed at that level. Turkey had a series of red lines and if those red lines were to be violated severe consequences would flow although what these severe consequences would be were never really open 